Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of the Garage Shop Insider Podcast brought to you by Labware. I'm Tim Packman. Sitting with me today is two owners of an incredible beer company called, please help me there, the Old Armor Beer Company. We want to get, make sure we get the logo and the name in there. And sitting with me this is Kyle and Stefan, and joining us is Carrie Earnhardt. And we're going to talk to them today about the business that they have, the involvement with Carrie Earnhardt, and the great things they're going to do, they're doing for veterans and will be in the future. First of all, guys, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, thanks for having us. Okay, yeah. so my number one question is, how did this all come together? How did the business start for you guys? So, Steph and I went to grad school together, right. University of Southern California. Uh, we were home brewing, taking kegs out to tailgates, drinking them. You of course. Know, quality check. Sure, of course. Uh, we, we started with what's called our Odark 30, which is an Imperial Stout, which was about 13.3 at the time. So in 96 really? degree temperature, Got it's it. a perfect beer for those hot yeah. days. <laughs> Uh, we would roll through those kegs. During that whole school project, everybody said, you guys should come up with your own brewery. And we kind of laughed it off. And then it actually, we had an entrepreneurial project. Okay. So we turned the brewery into that project. And then here we are today. So you took a school project. Yep. And you turned it into a business. Made it a business. Stay in school. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in school and make some brew. Um, <laughs> brew school. Okay, so you're a veteran of? Uh, Marine Corps. Army and Navy here, so all we missing an Air Force guy would have it covered. Uh, we're NASCAR got it. We're got it. No, okay, never mind. You're out, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Army, Navy, <laughs> Marine Corps. Corps. We got it covered. Uh, so, how long have you guys been in business? Well, we we started this whole project fall 2016, established it in 17, and then we opened our doors December of 2019, right at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Really, we kickstarted right before COVID. I was just going to ask you how that time. Best, best time. time. Best time. That's sarcasm. Highly recommended. Highly smart with sarcasm <laughs> there. <laughs> it's sarcasm. Well, for you guys, though, it didn't really, I mean, it affected just a tiny bit of it. No, it really didn't. It really didn't affect it. Honestly, because we got started, it, it had a great kickstart to it. Yeah, then we shut down for two months right. for the whole COVID right. nonsense. And then we had all the restrictions, you know, and all that crap that comes with it. But, you know, I think everybody appreciated what we were doing. With the whole revitalization of the town and then from there it's just now with restrictions lifted it's like back to business here we go so speaking of kannapolis why did you choose kannapolis so i'm from cabarrus county okay. i'm from this area you uh, i'm from new jersey perfect sorry you got, you got lost sorry. on the way <laughs> home in nascar right <laughs> that's the guy next to you <laughs> so yeah from from the area we saw what they were doing with kannapolis all these buildings were just deteriorating, falling apart. We walked in, we said, which building can we have? And they kind of laughed and said, Wh whichever one you want. Yeah. Uh, we said, well, if we come in here, here's what we're planning on doing. It's a business designed to give back to the community. And uh, we did that. Now the whole revitalization has just exploded. There's not a shop on the avenue left to rent. And, and the place is beautiful. From, beautiful. You, know, you grew is. up around here. You know exactly. It is my hometown. I grew up. Cruising Idiot Circle right here is what it was called. Idiot. Why, wait, wait, it used wait, to be, why called like Idiot you, Circle? You go up one side, had a median in the middle, and go down the other side. Now it's just a side-by-side -side street. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Ain't no median or nothing. And uh, they've done an awesome job of revitalizing. We've got the ballpark up the road, right. uh, a lot of boutique shops. And they also have a local Patriot coffee shop up the road, which is really cool to visit. Um, so you guys are tied yeah. in with that as well, correct? Yep. Yeah. That's, that's also our coffee shop right up the street. I mean, four buildings down, maybe. Okay. Um, same kind of theme as what we got going on here. Pay I stopped down. It's beautiful. Yeah, appreciate it. I uh, love the roll-up doors so the coffee smell goes yes. outside. Yeah, that's right. Yes. It's uh, really neat. Kate, Kate runs that. Kate that's runs right. that. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like the I just figured out. You guys come here. You drink. People can come here, drink beer, go home, say, hey, I might have a little rough, and then they go get coffee. Get coffee, yeah. You guys got it covered. Works yeah. out. We just go back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are, Keeps you going. You guys are geniuses. Coffee, you're like me. I can you're tell supposed you to drink water with your beer. I don't drink water. So I just go get right. coffee. There's, there's, a, there's enough water. Yeah. In there. There's enough water in the coffee. He's a little right. jittery, though. I can tell you guys went to college. Uh, all right, so, Kerry, how, how did the involvement, where did Kerry Earnhardt come into this? Well, I've been a longtime friend of Kyle's dad, Ken, and uh, he just rang me up one day and said, hey, man, my son and his buddies got this brewery in downtown Kannapolis, and they're about giving back to charities. And, you know, we got talking and just looking to maybe see if you have a charity to give back to. And, of course, I didn't have a charity, but I worked with a group of kids in the rodeo industry, and I ran the Junior Southern Rodeo Association for many years, and I were from 4 to 18 years old. So 
that was kind of hard to mix that with you know sure. the kids right and then i have the high school rodeo association with the scholarship program i was working with and i thought maybe that would be a good avenue but as we got to talking more and more about it they was like well what do you think about Earnhardt outdoor beer and I sit right there beside you my mouth's been watering the whole time yeah. <laughs> cool well, there's, there's plenty so, here Go on. <laughs> so yeah these guys have been wonderful and what they do for the community and for veterans is amazing and you know, that's one thing that me and my wife get involved with is people that are family oriented and like to give back. Very good. So the, so the first time I saw was the TV commercial yeah. that you guys shot and all of a sudden like, hey, is that Carrier? And I go, what the heck's he doing now? Where are these guys coming from? <laughs> yeah, they got coming? that in one take, by the way. Yeah, okay, one, oh, one take. come on. Yeah. Seriously. You want me to play the other take? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to play the other yeah, take? Hey, oh. hey, I'll play oh. the other take if you want. I'm going to use that on this one. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. All right, so guys, yes. real quick, right here on premises, everything's done right here. Everything's done right, right here. here. You want to talk about that? Uh, See, everything the fermenters that we, are behind us. And yeah, everything that we serve, we make, except for a cider. Right. Hopefully that will change soon, but make it all right back there. There's all of our fermenters and our brewing tanks on the right. But uh, every single one of our tanks is named after a military hero that we respected. Um, the first, the brewing tanks are actually named after the snipers from Black Hawk Down, and you got you know, Mike Murphy back there and Chris Kyle, and it goes all the way, you know, all the way down. And that's what our, one of our things is we want to make sure everyone is, you know, remembering these heroes. And if you go to our website, you can actually see a little background on them and see who they were. And the website is? And it's uh, oldarmorbeer.net. Got it. I saw there's a General Patton one back there. There is a General Patton one. You almost want to stop and salute that one just out of pure respect for that guy, yeah. Yep. All right, so you, you everything's done right here. Um, so the Pay It Forward board, tell me about that because uh, it sees it's Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, Coast Guard, Fire, EMT, and Police. So how does that, I see a lot of hashtags next yeah. to each, each part. That's an awesome program. Yeah, that, so that all started when we came into the state and we're trying to figure out all the alcohol laws. And they said, you can't discount alcohol. Because you go a lot of yeah. business, they're like 10% off, 15% off. And they said, you can't discount alcohol. I said, okay. Well, you know what we can do? Give it away. You can give it away. So we've been to uh, like celebrations for our birthday balls for the military and things like that and we walk in we're in uniform and somebody's like hey let me buy you a beer we've seen that happen sure but there's not always a veteran here when someone else is here so we said why don't we just do a pay it forward board go ahead and pay it forward that beer is covered so when that veteran first responder comes in it's already taken care of okay so how does one okay so i'm actually you come Navy. in i yep. say hey how do you would you ask someone or do they they tell you sometimes we can kind of tell okay you know, they kind of stand out a little bit, typically. Or come in, you say, hey, I've had one of those days. Can I just take one off the board? Right. Absolutely, here you go. Got it. You're done. So it goes both ways a little bit on that. Um, and it's funny, people come in, and they're like, we'll say, hey, take it off the board. And they're like, I'm not doing that. And they'll end up buying Find a couple. One, right. I know. You know, that's just kind of the the right. people that we're working with, you yeah. know. So, so um, Stefan, you were saying that sometimes you had to, like, get people in here to clear the board so you could put more on there. Yeah, uh, so sometimes we'll have uh, special events. Uh, we do cop night and firefighters, or we'll, we're talking about doing a Marine Corps birthday ball. Yeah, he had a tough time saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a Navy ball. Yeah, Marine. okay, I'm in there. Anyways, yeah. but... Um, we gave you guys rides everywhere in the Navy. No, Air Force gave us rides. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we'll do those, and people will, like, they'll knock it down, like, all the way down, and yeah. then the next day, I mean, everybody will come in and buy one, or they'll call them in, or they'll just send in like checks or cash, some of that, and we just yeah. load it right back up because those boards have been depleted all the way down multiple times. Right. To come right back. And you said you, you said earlier you started with a small board, oh, and you it had was like, like it was like that big. Yeah, yeah. Would that last four that days big. a week? And now six foot long. Well, yeah. we, we did it. Six and a half feet. Yeah. Half yeah. Feet. yeah, we did. Well, we had it. It was small, and we had a few ticks, and then we got picked up on uh, Fox and Friends mm -hmm. in New York, and and so they aired it and. It just blew up, and since then it's just now. Well, now you see it; it's full yeah. all wow. the time. So you guys were on Fox and Friends out of New York, mm -hmm. yeah. and you're talking to us. Yeah, we are big time. We you are, are getting big there. Time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're local. Hey, we, <laughs> local. we don't forget the little people. Right. <laughs> we appreciate that, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> God, how long have I known you? Long enough for you to say something like that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, even if you didn't right. be long enough, it's scary. You know? well, let's talk about the commercial. All right. The commercial was great. And you, I mean, who's, who, concept, who came over that whole, let's do a TV commercial, we're going to do this. Well, I think that was a little bit of all of us on mm -hmm. that one. Uh, I think we spitballed a few ideas. Yeah. And then we came out, we were, I mean, it first started, it was just anything extreme or, you know, mm -hmm. 
But uh, and then I think we just finally, you know, slapped the table on. Right. All right, hey, let's let's drink this, and it puts you in the outdoors. Right. right. Um, Good. Which is the whole theme. Yeah, we'll do the same thing probably similar for the yeah. coffee shop. Right. And we do uh, some stuff there, but uh, yeah, it, it just it was a fun commercial shoot. How many takes? One. Oh. Come on. How many takes? One. All right, hold wait, wait, wait. How many times did we jump into the scene? And then we end up there. Yeah. yeah. We drank it, and we ended up out in the middle of nowhere. All right, I'll put it this in way. In the outdoors. Thirty <laughs> minutes time frame. I just smelled some bull. Look, my wife wondering why it took me seven hours to get back home. Yeah. So, where, where did, where, so where'd you, where did you film it? it just we filmed fun. here, and yeah. then uh, some property about 10 minutes from here. Yeah. Yeah, in 15 Canap minutes. 15 minutes from here in Canapolis. In North Carolina, 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's good. It was 15. Big, probably a bunch of woods, and we were just yeah. hanging out in the woods. Yeah. It started out, we were going to have bonfire, a little bonfire That's in the morning right. and all that. So I was hanging out, drinking beer, and it ended up being dropping out of space. And there I am. Science. It takes it's you outdoors. Crazy. He was already there the whole he was, time. He was, he was there the whole time. You know, hey, guys, where you <laughs> been? It's like, it was like, it's funny. It's he a great a commercial. Cooler, he was fine. It, 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 it worked, fine, yeah. Man. He had a chair. No, he had a log. He had a log. He had a Google it. It's pretty amazing. It's a really cool show. Well, it worked because it got me to like look you guys up and then follow you on Facebook, and that's how I found about your event here. Then we come out and say, hey, man, I want to talk to you guys about this. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it's absolutely wonderful what you guys are doing with this and continue success and everything. And I, uh, um, I just hope the pay it forward keeps going and your business yeah. keeps going, and especially with the Earnhardt Outdoor Ale. Take one oh, down, pass yeah. it around. What do you Wait think? Heck, yeah. I mean, you think you want oh. more? This stuff is delicious. I had some myself. I can verify. Yeah, you hear it. That's it. Long Here you go, guys. Cheers, Cheers to you, the veterans. Cheers. And all the great Thank workers. you. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Oh, it's so good. Adventure with an attitude. <laughs> you can't always be outdoors, but you can be when you drink Earnhardt Outdoors Ale. Where are we? What the? Wait, is that Carrie Earnhardt? Hey guys, glad you finally made it. Old Armor Beer Company proudly presents Earnhardt Outdoor Special Edition Canapolis Ale for a limited time only. Adventure with an attitude. We're going to continue on with Kerry one-on-one -on -one right now, but Kerry, before we get started. No, before we get started. What? What's the deal with the wardrobe change, man? <laughs> I mean. All right, well, what, what did we do before we, went, we took a little quick break? We had a couple we, beers, we a couple, right? You need a nipple? No, I didn't. I mean. No, I got to, but thanks for asking. Dude, I might have spilled a little bit on me there, right. so I looked at it. I was just curious. I know. Okay, that's it. All right. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's go. My, my let's turn go now. All let's right. Go now it's my turn on you. <laughs> All right. On the can of the Earnhardt Outdoor L, uh -huh. it says Adventure with an Attitude. Where does that come from? I might have seen a picture. Well, you know, Kyle. This guy named Kyle. Yeah, we need Kyle. He has run across some stuff right. on the internet. Okay, so this is your this is your owner buddy here, this right? This is Kyle. Old Armor Beer Company. This is Old Armor Beer Company, Kyle. <laughs> and he had to bring this picture out. Oh yeah. So the story with this picture with Sharp Motor Speedway is me, Dad, and Dell Jr. Right. And we're sitting in a picture together, and Dad's in the middle, of course. I'm on one side, and Dale Jr.'s on the other. And we both got this little uh, did you guys picture you guys going had on. Matching haircuts at the time? Yeah, his he had the blonde right. tip, so okay. but mine don't. I just had to party in the back, you know. So that's where the attitude with adventure comes that's from. That's it. Nice. That's it. And the Kyle, mullet, the mullet, and the I mean, cheese ball mustache lives on. <laughs> I've been trying to get that off the internet, but nobody can do it. No, no <laughs> Not when you got fr friends like him yeah. to bring him up like that. That's right. All right. Yeah, that's where it came from. All too. right, now we know. So, by the way, uh, the beer is good, yeah. as we talked about before, and I spilled on myself. Um, so, what have you been up to besides, you know, the old Armor Beer Company and that? What have you been doing? Well, you know, outside of the partnership with Old Armor Beer Company, me and my wife have been doing the home designs with Schumacher Homes. Uh, right. We've got 15 home plans we've done. Um, it's kind of bringing the outdoors in, you know, outdoor living mm -hmm. lifestyle. and. And then our daughter, 17-year-old, she rodeos, so we've been traveling the circuit with that yeah. up and down the road. And we go to Wyoming, Kentucky, to Florida, to everywhere, yeah. Nebraska, Oklahoma. I, I keep on, but <laughs> it's a lot of miles. Uh, new trucks every so often, of course. Okay. Uh, speaking about the homes, that's all good. It's been in the news. We all yeah. know how But everything's good everything's there. Everything's good there. And you are still involved yep. using your name. Yeah, good. we're still involved with Schumacher Homes, good. doing our heart collection. Yep. Of homes, yeah. I've, uh, I went over there and toured a couple of them. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just the layout, the floor plans, everything was just amazing. Well, I'm telling you that that company is amazing in itself because it's all family oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, their nephews, everybody works in the company, and and they're about the passion of the customers. And you know, if they're 
something that they've done wrong that the customers don't like or agree with, they go back and change it. No okay. questions asked. And, you know, an organization like that is dear to our heart because we're about family. Right. You know, dad was big about family and everything. So um, it was just a great partnership, and we feel like we've known them forever. And okay. they're just awesome to work with. Uh, people that sit down and do all the drawings, the architects and everything, they are wonderful to sit with and talk about like what we envision in a home and what we want to see in the ceiling to the floor to the cabinets and everything. And they just draw it out as we're sitting there talking. So did you put a man cave in somewhere in some of these plans? Yeah, for... some of them's got okay. them. It's, it's, a, it's an add-on. It's not right. like in the plan, but okay. you add it on. Because <laughs> you don't need a man cave. Yeah, you're uh, to see the garages we have. <laughs> can imagine. They're amazing. Um, so the uh, why did you, now that we talked earlier, but it's just you and I, what made you want to get involved with the Old Armor Beer Company? What was it about these guys? Well, that... you know, I, I really didn't, wasn't aware of them. And uh, I was friends, my friend Ken Lingerfelt, which is Kyle's dad. Okay. Um, we've been friends for years. And he called me up one day and said, hey, my boy's got a beer, a beer company downtown Kannapolis. And, you know, it's your hometown that you grew up. And they're looking to do charity events um, where they donate to charities. And they've been doing it every month. And then the pandemic hit, and it kind of slowed them down. Right. But, he called me up about it, and I, of course, I don't have no charity of my own, like a foundation mm -hmm. or anything. So we was playing around. I, I'm involved with the Youth Rodeo Association, and the high school association has a scholarship program. So we were looking at maybe doing something to the scholarship program to donate to that. So we came in and had a meeting, and next thing you know, we ended up creating an Earnhardt Outdoor Sale. <laughs> How'd that go? Oh, it was <laughs> yeah. awesome. I mean, I get it. You I see get how it went. Uh, like, we, I, they're tasty. We, we know. Yeah. We might have to have another one here in a little bit. The exciting thing about it is this ain't the end. I mean, we got more in the future coming out. This yep. you know, On top of this, is going to be amazing. So this is, you're on batch number so, three, four? Well, we've made, the, we've made two batches and right. sold out quickly. Good. Um, we can I think 600 and something beers or something like that, and they sold out. I got eight real of them. Quick. So, yeah, that's and, right. Uh, yep. So, yeah, <laughs> people like you, you hoard them up. <laughs> hey, nah. hey, as a veteran, I got to support, <laughs> right. you know, as but, a friend uh, of you guys and the family, you know. Yeah, so it sold out pretty quick, and they just put their new, uh, the third batch on tap, and, you know, we're working on the next style right. of beer. It's not really an ale, it's something okay. different. So. All right. So, I was here the night they had the meet and greet meet not and the greet, not yeah. the first night the unveiling and this was this place was packed, was packed and there was line to see you and everything how'd that make you feel i mean you're in kannapolis the ball stadium's there the statue of your dad's around the corner i mean it had to be just like stepping in an old pair of shoes for you it was really cool and you know charlotte race was in town you know the fans were mm -hmm. here for that and everything so me and kyle and kathy and ken and Stephen, we all went right around the uh, campgrounds at the speedway in my humvee yep. And just kind of told people what we were about and invited them on out that night. And dang if they didn't show up. So uh, we had a big party that night. Uh, so when you went there, did you got out? Were people recognizing you? Or well, yes, it's a no, funny story I mean, about okay. that. Yeah, they, they, most of them did. And we got out this one place, and I walked up, say, hey, guys, how y'all doing? And he says, I don't know you. That's what, that was his first reaction? And I'm like, oh, OK, <laughs> I know. But I just want to introduce myself and tell you what we got going on. And the guy sitting in a chair behind him, Stands up, say, I know who you are. <laughs> so we finished our conversation. I give the guy that was sitting down a koozie. Right. And as we walked off, we get ready to walk off. The guy's like, hey, Don, I get one. I'm like, remember, you don't know me. <laughs> but it's funny because after I told you who I was and yeah. everything, what we are doing, he had to go get his wife to come okay. out and get a picture. So that was really so cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and they I mean, showed up that night, too. Even better. I just picture being in the campground, and, you know, you're just hanging out. And here comes Carrie Earnhardt with a Humvee and all these yeah. people with beer, and you're like, well, what's going on here? That would be right, pretty cool. That's good. I mean, the Humvee attracted a lot. Sure. But the one thing, I've, I've known you for 20 years. You've always been fantastic with people and yeah. very approachable and down to earth. And uh, I think that's part of the appeal with, you know, Old Armor Beer and the veterans and the charity and everything. So it's all a good yeah, combination. I mean, you know, that's one thing my wife says is a downfall of, my, of, my, of me is that I like to talk. So oh, that's right. know, I carry on a conversation with anybody I meet. Mean. <laughs> that's good. So Earnhardt Outdoors, what exactly is that? Is that something that... Well, it was a brand me and my wife started many years ago, and uh, we were looking at doing an outdoor TV show, and through all the meetings with production companies and everything, it just never fit because they wanted to be more like a reality, you know, like us fighting and carrying on. Right. We're not about that. Right. And so my brother and sister, they got involved. They said, hey, we'll come aboard to help out, and, you know, maybe we could all three do something together. Well, between scheduling and things going on, it was hard to do. So here 
last few months I've taken it back over and okay. we're trying to build it up and it's it's essentially about getting kids in the outdoors you know these days it's all computers and games and stuff like that and you know I remember growing up I don't even, I don't think I, only time I was inside was to eat dinner and sleep and watch cartoons and for me yeah, so. I, I didn't watch much cartoons I was running around most of the time outside you know riding my bike through the woods and yep. fishing and stuff like that all right so um, so the, it's a good been a good tie-in and, and people want to do you have a Facebook page, something we can get? Well, we're working on that. We do Learn have Hard uh, Learn Hard Outdoors on Facebook okay. and Instagram. And uh, you know, like I said, we're just starting to build it back up and we're trying to create some new content for that. So it's okay. going to take a little bit, but we're getting there. So your dad's statue's around the corner. Yeah. And it's it's a great statue, very poignant. All the people have donated. And, you know, people come here, and it, now you're involved here. And just right around the corner, it's got to be a nice little Canapolis. It is. Yeah. It is. And I'm glad they left it there. You know, they've revamped this whole uh, downtown <laughs> Canapolis, and it's an amazing job they've right. done. But so they've revamped the whole town, and right. the gym theater is an icon of downtown Canapolis. Now, did you go there as a kid? I did. Okay. I what, movies, up, what movies do you remember? Man, I don't remember. Okay. I just remember going and watching. All right. I really got to say about the girl that was involved. Sure. Like they no. got it was about the girls. It wasn't about the movie, you know, go <laughs> take, take a, a date. date, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, they've re re redone the whole uh -huh. gym theater, mm -hmm. and it's really brought it up to modern and everything. It still has the balcony Good. that you can look down over the screen, and uh, they kept some of the old stuff that they're known with by, but it's, it's really cool. So be in the area, come downtown, check it out. All kind of restaurants and... Mm -hmm. Little snack shops and boutiques and everything. So I have to say, it's good movies one thing, but if you have good concessions and popcorn, that's all oh, you need right yeah, there. Yeah, it was the bomb. I mean, it was the old school. You, know, you walk in, had the glass with all the candy oh, yeah. in it and everything. And, yeah, I mean, I, perfect. I think the movie was five dollars mm -hmm. and cotton candy and popcorn and candy and all that were a dollar. Yeah, perfect. So it was a good date place to go because yeah, I mean, right. twelve bucks, you're done. <laughs> now twelve now bucks, I think you it's get thirty. In. It's twelve bucks <laughs> you to get in. Yeah, the movie yeah. tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of your dad, so the fans' connection to him is going to be eternal. We know that. Right. And you're kind of carrying that on by you know getting involved and being out in the public and you know when people see you, they you know they look at you real quick and they go, ooh, yeah. And they're like you know it's real quick and I sit here looking at you. Um, what's that mean to you to still have people come up and talk to you about him? I mean, it, it's pretty sincere, you know, to know that people look at me like that. Um, you know, even Dale Jr. Kelly always says, man, I, I just can't believe you're so much like Dad, you know. <laughs> right. But, it, it, you know, I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm a, I don't know what to say, but I'm excited I've got the traits I've gotten from him. Um, you know, being in, in love with outdoors and um, enjoyed racing, mm -hmm. the career I had, and just stuff like that, and kids and family. So your connection to the family is... We'll talk, we'll talk about it a little yeah. bit, so it's kind of carries through to that one. Yes. Um, some favorite memories you have of him. Some of the, I mean, as you, because, you know, you, we know, we through the Dale Jr. Well, Dome, just, a lot of us learned that you didn't have a relationship yeah. until, you know, later. I was 16. 13, 16. Yeah. So when that started again, that had to be like. It was a lot of fun. And yeah. then, you know, I, I get to visit with him at the race shop and hang out and stuff. To just, you know, get to know him better. Yeah. And, uh. Then as you know, as times went on, I've got older, and there's things that he was. I don't know how to say this. There's things that went on in your life or anybody else's life that no one else knew about, but he did. Right. Um, there's like times that you know, I was young. I was 18, talking about getting married, me and this girl, and just us talked about it. We ain't told our parents. Right. You know, moms and stepdad and stuff. So. Next thing I know, I get a call. Hey, come on, we need to go talk. No, I'm sorry, I was working at a gas station right. and pumping gas and changing oil. I was sitting there pumping gas. He pulls up. Hey, get in the truck. So we need to go ride. I'm just like, Dad, I'm working. I'm, I'm working, Dad. So get in the truck. Go tell Bub <laughs> you're going. So I said, All right. So, I so did. wait a minute. He went. He pulled up and ran that guy's business too. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes, he did. <laughs> and we gave you the look. You knew it was time to get in the truck. So we got yeah. the truck. He right around. And he says, So you got anything to talk about? I'm like. Mm, no, you picked me up, wanting to ride around. What do you need? He's like, well, I hear a little rumor going around. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you know, like a girl involved, like getting married? I was like, that, how's that a rumor? No one knows but me and her. <laughs> He's like, well, I know. Wow. So we talked a while. And, and, yep. you know, thankfully, in a way, I didn't listen to him. I continued on, got married, mm -hmm. had two great boys out of the marriage. Is the only thing that was come out of it. It sure. was great. But, right. um, if it hadn't been for the kids, I, I wish I'd listened to Dad. 
<laughs> yeah, damn it, he was right in the yes, long run, was. wasn't he? <laughs> yes, he was. I just picture him pulling up, saying, "Get in the truck." <laughs> but you know, it's just you know, there's times like that, and this this shenanigans he would pull, like in the race shops and stuff. And yeah. Just pulling tricks. Yeah, on he's you. always pulling tricks on everybody. Like, give me one one good one that sticks out. Come on, oh. we all know he was always pranking. Well. The one that sticks in my mind, we had this guy named Bobby Festerman. Always hung out and worked on the Bush team, and uh, he drove his Jeep. And Dad had an area you couldn't park in at the shop. It had to be between these two uh, arrows. Well, this guy would park, you know, not in them area arrows in between them. And it's funny because we was working on the car, and Bobby comes. He, he goes to leave, and he comes back in just raising cane. I'm like, man, what's going on? So just come look at this. Walk out and the dumpster's got his Jeep sitting on top on of top it. On top of the? On top of the dumpster. How did he? And there's a picture in the deer head shop. And he opened the cabinet, it's got all these pictures of like right. good times we've had. <laughs> and it's got Bobby climbing up the dumpster to get in his Jeep. How did they get it up there? Forklift. Okay, I just want to make sure. I mean, his dad, he can do anything, you know? So just stuff like that. <laughs> Special valet parking yeah. for him. That's yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Um, and then just the times we had getting to know each other and, and doing things, you know, fishing together and hunting, the times we got to hunt together, and just a lot of good memories. And from that, you discovered you had a brother and sister. Yeah. And so you got to know them as well. And, yep. And uh, so there you develop relationships with got, them as well. I got a great relationship with them. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kelly and Dell Jr., and uh, I've got another sister, Taylor, I see occasionally. Um, we're not as close as me and Kelly and Dell Jr. are, yeah. but, you know, just for certain reasons, she's got her own avenue she travels mm -hmm. in life, and, you know, we have ours. Right. And so um, you and Dale Jr. had being roommates for a while, uh, hang, yeah. you know, living together. So that, that had to be like a – did you ever have like a – I don't mean like a fist fight, but you, you got to have – We had just, arguments. Okay, got it. Like yeah. typical siblings did. Yeah, typical siblings, yeah. And then one time there would have been a fist fight and he wasn't there, thank goodness. You what? There was one time there would have been a fist fight, but he wasn't at home. Okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure I heard you right. <laughs> it was in his, pod, uh, his podcast we did. It was about me coming home with this girl, bringing uh -huh. her home yeah. for the first time. and. Key goes in, didn't turn. So I couldn't get in the house. <laughs> he changed the lock on me. Because? Well, <laughs> it was all about this phone bill that he ran up because he, he, you know, playing these games online okay, and everything. Yep. And it, it was like, our you know, normal bill is 60, 80 bucks. We would split. And yeah. this time it was 400 bucks. And I wasn't paying that part. I paid my 40 bucks so, and I'm done. So he rang it up and then locked you up. Yes. <laughs> all right. I'm going to ask, you had to get in somehow. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we started out with the pry bar, and then I just hooked the chain to the truck and pulled the door. And it you came did what? And hooked the chain to the truck. And just did and the... just pulled. Not hard. I didn't, like, jerk it, but just I just pulled enough to get it open. Okay. And so you're... But on that show, he tells me, and I, you know... <laughs> Wait, real quick. Young, young as I am. You're, you're, the girl had to be like, what the hell's going on here? Well, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> oh, sure. I'll get out. She's like, these guys are nuts. <laughs> well... I don't know what she was thinking. That's I was right. so embarrassed okay, anyway. myself. All right. <laughs> okay. Just got and it. so, not to, uh, no, I didn't even think it out about it throughout this whole time since that's happened until the show that we did on his podcast. He's like, well, I didn't change the front door lock. You could have went through there. We never went through the front door. I always went through the back door, so I never even thought about the front door. Why so I probably could have went around there and just <laughs> unlocked it and went right in. Speaking of that download, that was, it's still from what i know we've talked about yep. and i i asked some people it's one of the of all the download all those shows not just the dale jr download all in the world it's still one of the all that's one of the top five yeah for a while it was number one yeah and it's still one of the top five and that's been like a month now well, i know two days after or four days after we did the video uh, matter at least he called me he's like dude you realize we're number four in the podcast world wow. i'm like okay. okay okay he's like no you don't realize how like amazing yeah. this is i'm like okay Whatever. Why do you think that is? I, I just think people has an interest in my story. Right. Um, because, you know, I, I'm not in the public eye. I don't, you know, haven't told my side. Mm -hmm. um, growing up with my mom and stepdad and not being around my dad and right. stuff like that. I think people, are, they just like to hear a good um, story because we're all the same. You know, there's no one different. Mm -hmm. um, we all have trials and tribulations in our life. Right. And, I think that just relates to a lot of people. So what made you decide, you know, like we talked, you're 51 now. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, you know what, let's, we'll talk. And, but I think it was, you're in a very safe environment with well, your birth you know, brother. Just, it was a lot of things. Um, he, he'd been trying to get me to come on a couple of times and, you know, there's been people trying to get me to do things about my life. And 
you know, with kids growing up and stuff, I wanted to get all that established, and I think now it's just time. So what's I'm been not getting no younger. You know? <laughs> no, none of us are, my I mean, friend. Who knows when that day <laughs> might come. Exactly. Uh, what if, when people have approached you, what have they said that you've talked to about that? Well, the biggest thing is they were amazed that Dell Jr. didn't know any of the stories that we had talked about. He didn't know about them um, really? or how they, how things went. Uh, and you've seen it yeah. um, in his face Sorry. whenever we was talking about it. He's like, what? What? And he goes back and asks I'm like, dude, let's just continue on. And he's like, no, I got questions. Because <laughs> it's his life, too. So, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I can see where his interest, yeah. you know, in, in my life, right. not being involved with them and then coming into their life. Sure. Like, who's this guy? Yeah. When do we have a brother? Well, he's when older. he was at, at the age he was, he had he didn't even think about it. Sure. Like I said, I pulled up in the driveway, and he's out in the front yard playing football, and it didn't mean nothing to him because right. he was young playing football with his buddies. Sure. Here's just another guy showing up at the house. Yeah. Probably used to that. But my sister, she was you know, old enough, and she knew what was going on, and uh, we connected pretty quick. You and Kelly? You and Kelly, yeah. Good. Uh, did you ever fight with her? No, you know, no, no argument with no, her? No, not really. Do you think you would have won or lost that one? Well, I just know not to argue with her. <laughs> and you mean that as a compliment? Because right? that way I could say I haven't lost anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like your thinking, yeah, my I mean, friend. Very good. Uh, there was a time the three of you raced. Yeah. All uh, late models and everything. Yeah. That had to be fun. It was that a lot of fun. Uh, there was times we was at Myrtle Beach together, at Hickory together, uh, Nashville. We went out and run a big Nashville race out there. And had a lot of good times, a lot of fun, a lot of memories. And, uh, some of your favorite racing memories. Um, one involves your dad. One, yeah, at Pocono, we ran the Arca Series. Um, ended up winning the race. No, 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 no. You didn't just well, win. Well, we lapped the you whole. You stopped. We lapped everybody except for second place, and we had a, at least a <laughs> half a track ahead of right. lead on him. So. Even the pace car couldn't keep up with you. I heard. Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, and it was neat because we built that car off of junk parts, like we talked about on Pub Table right. Racers, yep. and. Uh, it was junk parts that we got from the old cup cars that they took off after a 500 mile race and still got a lot of miles left on them right so i used them so you 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 win the race your victory lane and now yep. kevin as our executive producer he, he's been filming for a while he has video of oh, your dad he does. running down victory lane knowing you're gonna win or down pit road to get to victory yeah. lane like he was determined he's like, i'm gonna get that victory lane and be there when carrie wins this thing. i didn't realize that yeah he told us about that earlier yeah, he, he Maybe filmed. Maybe pull that up some. Exactly. So there's something I'd share with you. Yeah. Uh, but you have, when you got to Victory Lane. So we got to Victory Lane, and, and there's a picture of it. But I get out of the car and, you know, stand on the door. Ah, and yeah. I look down. Dad's there with the biggest grin I've ever seen him have. Yeah. Of course, I jump right off, right into his Perfect. arms. And that's the picture they got me going into his arms right. like that. And that was a very special moment. <laughs> that had to be. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just, getting a little, it was, just thinking it was, about it. Sorry. It was. Yeah. That is cool. I mean, I, yeah. I just, I, I remember seeing it. But uh, when Kevin said that he has that video of your dad, like, I'm getting to victory lane, get the hell out of my way yeah. type thing. That'd be cool to see that video. Other racing memories you had. I mean, you, you raced in the some of the um, um, cup races. You ran yeah, we, a lot of bush and then well, some we started uh, trucks. With the ARCA, well, I started with late models, street stocks first, me and Dale Jr., then late models, then goodies dash. Uh, went to the bush series back then and then ran trucks and some cup races. And my uh, most memorable cup race the short time it lasted was at Michigan. It was uh, me, Dale Jr., Dad, all three in the race. And I outqualified Dad to make him take Divisional 1. How'd that go over? It wasn't good. Uh, he, <laughs> Did he say something I mean, before he, the race? He peeked no? around about it. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it didn't last long. He was up there in a lap and a half next to me, and <laughs> then he was gone. Wait a minute. So you all called and he caught you in a lap oh, and a half God, and took yeah. off? Did at least well, wait I mean, I think I started like 27, 28, <laughs> okay. so it wasn't well, far, far for him to right. get to me. It's still almost 20 yeah. cars, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty and good. And then I got a little incident and ended up falling out of the race pretty early. But the, the famous picture is the three of you in the grass in there. In the grass area. Remember Dale Jr. Yeah. had the, the white, you know, the dye, the yeah. uh, cut, and you and your dad are standing there like. We're all standing there like. like that. <laughs> And he's nudging us out of the way, <laughs> trying to get us out of picture. It what, was really cool. What do you miss about racing the most? Being around him. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. How about um, the on track? Being, uh, and the two, you know, being around the people I was around. I've made a lot of friends in racing and mm -hmm. uh, just miss seeing them. I go there now and I don't even recognize half the people in there. Right. Um, and then the uh, on track, outside of that win, it, uh, Pocono, uh, I guess, was Talladega. We were running the 33 Bass Pro Shops car and had the big bass on the hood. And I think I qualified like 13th, 
in that race. We've been running side by side. And I see Dale Jr. up there about third place. I think he was second line behind the leader. And so I'm like, what's this? So I hit the middle and we go straight up to the front. And about the time I get Dale Jr., he pulls out and I just nail him. <laughs> Not the back bumper is sitting there flapping, and he takes off and goes to lead. And then I end up you know, falling back to fifth at that time, and we're sitting there riding around, and Michael Waltrip and Dale, uh, Jeff Gordon, I think it was, got tangled up, and Michael come down and hit me, and next day I'm in the wall. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one race that was also, I think, Talladega, um, you went, you passed him somewhere in the middle of the race, and I was still, I was working at Dale Earnhardt Corbett at the time, and mm -hmm. he comes on the radio, goes, "Look at Lamont go!" And we oh, all went, yeah. "Oh, like that, Lamont, Lamont." So it goes back to what we were talking about. Yeah. But uh, Dick Bergren, who you know, one of my heroes, yeah. taught me a lot, comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, "Whoa, what's he talking about, Lamont?" And I'm like, "I don't know if I should tell him." I go, "I, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to tell you right we'll now because I didn't want to be. I didn't know if it was like an inside joke or whatever." Nah. Of course, we all laugh. And well, then, everybody in DEI called me Lamont because I would go to the warehouse right. and get all them used parts, just like Sanford and Son. You exactly. Know? It was great. It was so, a great name. And I lived. I loved it. I lived it up. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. And I owned it. So. Yeah, you know, that's good memories there. Uh, Dale and I Incorporated. Um, you were yeah. part of that. Yeah. Um, you know, as a driver. Well, for a little bit. I get where you're going, and it was some good times there. And yeah. I remember the day Dad purchased that place back in 87, I think it was. Um, it was a bunch of pine trees and that little uh, brick house mm -hmm. out front. And uh, he chain-linked everything in, a bit of a little shop out back, which is Deerhead Shop now. And had a good time racing out of that, and then built it to where it's at today, or right. the day, you know, he was, he, days he was around. Right. Um, and that was his dream and passion to have his own race shop and race teams and not that's what he worked for growing up from 19 years old on up um, to have his own operation and to see that place setting like it is now it's just it's kind of heartbreaking and disappointing a lot of us uh, talked we did a, a highway three reunion yep. show and it's so far as as of you know you talk 40,000 people it's a two-parter um, went over well people just want to hear the stories from there uh, when you worked there, uh, I remember one time when I was there, you yeah, came in and said, so where, where's your office? Like, they announced yep. you're coming aboard. We're like, yeah, Carrie's on board. Awesome. And this is going to be good for us, and we need this shot in the arm, and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, I said, where's your office? And you stood next to mine, and you pointed down at your feet and go, that's right my office. I yep. go, what do you mean? He goes, I want to be everywhere. I go, that'll be good. That'll be great. Well, see, that, at that time, I was still racing. And, uh, you know, Dad, every day, would walk around and visit everybody when he was around. And... So Teresa came to me and talked to me about coming to work for the company and you know, being full time. And we had a discussion and she said, you know, you know, your dad would always walk around and he was the face and we just don't have that no more. And we know you always go around and visit people like he did. So mm -hmm. I'd like for you to come aboard and walk around, talk to the employees and get feedback from them, and bring it you know, to the top and see what we can do to improve the company. And little did I know, Things went the way they were, and wasn't improving the company. Right. So, but that's what it was about—just me and me being there and walking around there, interacting with the people and employees. Do you think if things would have continued on, and I know certain people leaving, I'm not pointing at your brother for yep. that, but just if everyone said, "Okay, let's just get on," do you think we'd still be all be there to work um, in I think if we had um, a different leader, mm -hmm. we might would yeah. be better than what we were. Right. Because during the reunion show, I asked all five of them, I said, if it opened up under the right circumstances, yeah. would you go back? And they all said to a T, yes. Well, that's one thing about the employees there. They, and, and that shows what dad meant to them is because mm -hmm. they were dedicated and loyal. Um, I know dad talked to a lot of people himself just to come aboard to work for him. And there's several, Will Gray, I remember him. You know, <laughs> he hired him, talked him into coming on board and hired him from California. Yep. And he drove that old pink. I don't forget what it was. It was a pink car. My dad come up with another another car, give it to Will, say, here, I'm trading you for your car. And dad had that pink car in the back on the farm. <laughs> yep, he had it back. He and said he drove. Last I knew it was still there. <laughs> $300 car, he said. Yeah. He drove up and he said, I'm not leaving until I get a job yeah. here. And that's pretty much how so it, it was. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And he became yeah. one of the key engine builders yep. in the sport, too. Yeah. Yep. And Will Gray did. Dad, the thing with dad is you knew where he stood. Yep. And, you know, if you didn't cross him, you were you were good to go. 
But he was also one of the things there was a, if he walked in and he stood flat footed in your office, you're in trouble. If you put a foot up on yeah. a chair, you're okay. Yeah. And people always look just to look for that look side. for that. That's yeah. like if you walked in, okay, first he's here. Like even Jeff Clark, you know, Jeff Clark we oh, called yeah. Tarzan. I mean, he's just he said that man when I was in his office, I felt like I was three foot tall yeah. that he could get to him like that. But uh it was that, that's so you knew where you stood when he walked in your office. Right. But yeah. he was also the type to like if there was a problem, he'd like, Okay, let's move on, right? Right. Yeah. He'd work it out. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Um, so tell us about your family. What have you been up to? What are they up to? All the, all well, the kids. First of so all, I, uh, your grandmother? My grandmother's the doing, patriarch. doing good. Matriarch, she, I mean. She's had uh, a little bout here recently, and, you know, she's up there 92, three years old. God and, bless. You know, as, as we all have that to look forward to, you know, it comes mm -hmm. a time when you, had, you can't go on your own. You have to have a lot of help, and I think that's where she's at today. Mm -hmm. But she's... Still strong mind and strong willed. Um, knows, like I walk in and she knows exactly who I am. So, right. good. We, you know, still good lady there. I see some pictures once in a while you guys post on Facebook and just see here and all of you there. It's just, yeah, it's just so cool. And I think a lot of people go, oh, look at they're all together, and that's yeah. kind of nice. We to did. See. We always did Christmas this past year. We didn't, of course, because of the pandemic right. thing, whatever that word is. Um, you know, we kind of played it safe with Mamma and you know, her, she had some illnesses and stuff, and yeah. we didn't want to take a risk sure. of her getting anything. So, uh, but usually we'd have the Christmas and Thanksgiving at her house every year, and the whole gang would show up, and we'd all sit around and watch football and just like know, the talk old days. stories. Perfect. <laughs> if those walls could talk, oh, right? Oh, Lord, if they could talk. <laughs> Yes, uh, I would okay, love to hear some more stories <laughs> out of that. Your wife, Renee, she's yeah, involved my wife, with Earnhardt Outdoors. She's, in the she's big with Earnhardt Outdoors. Like I said, we have the homes mm -hmm. we do with uh, Schumacher Homes, and she has a shirt and hat line. I call it for women's, but she said boy, men like it too. But What's it called? It's a Royal Heart. Royal Heart? R-U-R-A-L with the heart. Okay, got it. Uh, H -E rural, rural heart. Okay. I don't know how to spell the heart. She's H E R T or something like okay, that. Okay, rural heart. Yeah, rural okay. heart. Is and there a website? Yes, yeah, it's a website okay. or a Facebook page she okay, has. Perfect. It's a uh, rural heart, and you have to join it, and she accepts you. And it's got okay. like old farm oh. styles of clothing and hats and stuff. And perfect. She's got a couple artists that works for her. Good. And, and the then kids? the kids are grown and going away. Uh, the two boys are been gone. Oldest one's Bobby. He's working a pipeline. He's got a, a son and daughter, which is I'm a grandpa now. Hmm. And so he uh, works pipeline, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and, uh, you know, welding on the pipeline. So he does that. And then Jeffrey races. He's racing for uh, he races JD Johnny, Motorsports? Johnny Davis Motorsports and a um, great group of people. Um, you know, Johnny's taking him under his wing and giving him a ride several years now. And he's always there to look after him and take care of him so do you watch the races do you follow them do i you? don't anymore okay. um you know i got a little app on my phones nascar and i go to it to see where jeffrey's at Good. and that's what i look for i ran into him the other night he said to say hi oh yeah hey <laughs> i was like hey he's but, got uh, that smile that he's got that crooked yeah. you know the the smile it's like oh my gosh it's like say say things skip a generation but that smirk that, that he has is that prominent and, yeah prominent there yeah yeah uh, and the daughter? Well, I got my oldest daughter, Blade. She's yeah. deputy, cl deputy clerk of court for Iredell County. Okay. And then our youngest one, 17, is Kayla. And she does all the radio. In, and she just signed on with Oklahoma State University and uh, going out to Durant, Oklahoma, in first week or second week of August to start school out there. Now, wait, and she didn't sign on. She got a scholarship. She made the team. Made the rodeo, the rodeo team. team out there. The rodeo team. And so she got a full ride ad uh, academic scholarship uh, for Oklahoma State. So that's Perfect. pretty impressive. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. Should we crack a beer before we end this? Yes, please oh, do. let's do it. Gosh, yes. Because, you that's know, if you're going to have Terry Earnhardt on, you're going to hold these back for me. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Cheers to you, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Thanks for being on the Garage Shop Insider. And uh, God well, bless you and your you. family, man. You guys have been Appreciate uh, all you do awesome. for, hey, man. for the sport. No for, problem. I try. For NASCAR and racing and the fans out there. Yeah, well, it's guys like you that make me want to keep doing it. I appreciate let's it. Let's drink to that. Thank you. Hey everybody, we appreciate you so, so much for following us on the Garage Shop Insider. And those of you who subscribed, thank you. Those of you who haven't, all you gotta do is hit that little subscribe button. That's all we're asking you to do. It's absolutely, totally free, free. And you can follow along and be part of the cool kids. Speaking of the show, we're now gonna be going every other week. We've been going every week, but right now we have so much content and so many great things coming up with Bonneville and other things we're doing. We're gonna alter the schedule, so we'll be doing Garage Shop Insider every other week. Subscribe, absolutely free. We absolutely, totally appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you.